welcome to Jesus is the Answer Ministry with Pastor Robert Stair. Let the Master set you free. Let the Master bring his peace to you. He ain't asking you to be of this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how. If you're going to walk through what I see, you have got to make it the foundation how Jesus loves you. That is your life. He's just on the most astounding. Watch it. As he is, so are we. Welcome again to Jesus. This is the ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. I tell you, did you get that word last week? Oh, oh, oh. I tell you, it's going to get better this week. See, everyone that seeth the Son and believes on him. Everyone, and you know, a lot of times I'm telling you, saints, when trouble comes, problems, circumstances, situations, most people just try to believe. But we need to see Jesus. Now we've been been using our text in John six, verse four, and Jesus said this. And so every time I read, Jesus said, "This is the will of the Father." I perk my ears up because I want to know the will of the Father because. Uh, John said in 1 John 2, 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in it. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, these are not, not a, of, of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. Oh, here it is. Here it is. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven abideth forever. Did you see that? See, so I want to know God's will because that's the only thing that you're going to take to heaven, it ain't going to get burned up. And that's the will of my Father. He that do it, no, well, not know what it is, <clears throat> but he that do it, the will of my Father, I'm at it forever. Now, <clears throat> here in John 6, verse 40, Jesus said, and this is the will of him that sent me. Here, here he is again. You see, here's the will of God. Here's the person that does God's will. Everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him. Oh, saints, if y'all would learn this, you would have such a better life. If you would learn to, to, to go read some stories about Jesus, go read some scriptures about Jesus, where he taught something, where he said something, where he did something. Everyone that seeth the Son and see, see him first, that means you, you, you're you hearing something about him. Seeing and hearing is tied together. Jesus said, and believeth on me, hath everlasting life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. Now, we, we looked at Matthew 3, uh, verse 11, and Matthew uh, was speaking about John the Baptist. And how John the Baptist had revelation that Jesus was coming, and that he 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 uh, he was mightier than him. <clears throat> John said, "I baptize you with water, but he that that cometh after me is is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fans in his hand he would thoroughly purge his floor." And gather his wheat in the garner, he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then come of Jesus to Galilee, to join under John to be baptized of him. And, and John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and come thou to me. Jesus answered, said to him, Sup it uh, uh, to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill. All righteous righteousness is what God say, what God do. Uh, being in right standing with him, what, what he makes you, what he does for you. Then he suffered him, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Listen to this. And a lower voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. 
And so when, when you and I please God, when the spirit come on us and we please God, we always keep in an awareness of his presence. We're always keeping an awareness of, of, a, of an affectionate reverence for him and, and promptly obeying him and always staying uh, uh, grateful for the benefits that the Lord has, has, has bestowed upon us through Christ Jesus. Always staying thankful. And so now then you go to Matthew, <laughs> now John just got through with that and you go to Matthew 11, verse two. Now when John heard, when John had, had, had heard in the prison, he locked up because of uh, telling the truth. The works of Christ, he sent to his disciples. Now, he's hearing the works of Jesus. People in church be hearing the works of Jesus. And saying unto them, Are thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now, I want you to hear Jesus because it's a revelation that he's speaking to them to go tell John and then you got to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you and me what to do whenever a dark place comes up. And look, listen to this. But most people don't do this. Go to church all their life and worry and stress. Well, Pastor, that's just normal. No, it's not normal. It's called sin. To look how great God is in Christ Jesus and then to tell him he can't come through for you. That, that's, that's sin. When you know to do good and don't do it. And so Jesus said, go show John again. That means you and I have to go and read, hear Jesus, see the scriptures, see Jesus. Go and show John again. See, so faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So faith come by hearing. Faith comes when, when you hear the word, so you're seeing it. When you hear it, you're seeing it. And hearing the words that come from the lips of Christ the Messiah. And, um, and so here, here's another revelation here. Um, you don't have to actually be the one that saw Jesus do the miracle. All you got to be is the one who hear about it, get told about it, read about it, see it in the scriptures. See, well, this is what make you believe. Now remember now I text John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I'll raise him up at the last day. So you see, Jesus is, is giving you the principle of how to biblically believe. And that's see the Son and believe on him. You, you hear about the miracles. You hear about he took your sins away on the cross. You hear about God raising from the dead. You hear about he's seated on the right hand of God. You, 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 you read and see that Jesus took all your sins away. No, not, not some of them. He took all of them away except one. The one sin he never will forgive. And that's the sin of unbelief. You have to believe to get rid of that one. Amen. You remember uh, uh, the, the father, son been bound and and he, 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 Jesus said, he said, Lord, if you can help us, help us. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, he said, if you can believe all things are possible. He said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. See, see, you, your unbelief needs some help. But it's not going to be forgiven. You, you got to believe. See, <clears throat> and so that's the sin that 
most people have is the sin of unbelief. And you have to believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. And so, so you, you see here, then, then let's go to Acts. Acts 26, uh, verse uh, 18. Well, let me read 17. Uh, Delivering them, thee from the people, from the Gentiles, under whom now I send thee. So the Lord Jesus came and spoke directly. This is in red. He spoke directly to the apostle Paul to go to the Gentiles. Now, what, what was the purpose? Verse 18, Acts 26, to open their eyes. See, see you got to see, son. You got to see the son. You got to see your need for him. Every single day, I never lose sight of, of loving him, having an affectionate reverence for his words uh, and for him. I, I never lose sight of promptly obeying him. I never lose sight of being grateful for the benefits, the blessings the Lord has given me through Christ. And so uh, you, you need to open their eyes. See, everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And so Jesus told the apostle Paul to go to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. See, you, you, you're not saved and you ain't been turned to, to Satan being your Lord, to the Lord Jesus being your Lord. And from the power of Satan to God. Same power that ruled, dominated me and, uh, back in 1988. Now I was on crack, cocaine, heroin, drinking, Lusting, robbing, stealing, lying, cheating, selling drugs. Uh, just, just, um, I was just a sinner. But June 30th, 1988, I turned. How'd you do that? The spirit of the Lord. I began to pray and, and meddle with God. And I got the meddling with him. He meddled back. And I, I, I uh, he told me this. Jesus told me. If he don't tell me this, I never can see him, what he really was requiring of me. And here's what Jesus said. I told, I told God, I believe Jesus, son of God. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. I said, God, I, I can't believe that no more. This was in, in the Samaritan Drug Treatment Center on Chev Avenue, up North Six Cross from Tennessee Titan State. I said, Lord, I can't believe no more in you. I really believe there's a little boy that Jesus was son of God, died on the cross, rose from the dead. That, that's all they preached. And now listen carefully. Jesus said these magic words that a lot of people need to get a hold of. He said, yeah, but you never gave me your heart. I want your heart. Jesus. And what's happening, Pascal? What's happening? He's opening my eyes up. He's getting me to see what he's requiring of me. So you got to see that. So I didn't see that before. Either. I just thought, you know, you say you believe in Jesus, believe in God, believe that, you know, uh, that he died and rose from, but say, he wants your heart. He wants your heart. He, he wants, what do you mean he wants your heart? He wants to tell you and I what to do, how to think, how to talk, when to talk. He want to tell you how to act, how to think, how to live, how to treat people, how to not treat people. He, he want to control your finances. He wants to rule what you do every day. Yeah, yeah. We talk about the Lord Jesus. He, he's not out to control. He, he is control. He's got the life. And he wants that life to control us. And, and so you see here, uh, to open their eyes. Now, in, in, hold your spot there. In, in Acts 3, verse 20, uh, uh, Acts 3, 26. But unto you first, God, having raised up, his son Jesus. Now, now, now here it is. 
So you got to see this. See, when you see this, you're reading this, but you're really seeing it through the eyes of faith. You're really seeing it through the eyes of the spirit that, that God raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That's powerful. See, he, he, he didn't bless you. God didn't send Jesus for you to keep smoking. God didn't send Jesus for you to keep chewing the back. God didn't send Jesus for you to keep on cursing. God didn't send Jesus for you to listen to word and music. That's, that's words that's taking you away from him. God, God didn't send you. Send Jesus. To bless you to, to keep watching pornography. To get divorced. <laughs> now, he, he, he'll forgive you of any of those things. But he didn't send Jesus for you to continue none of them. He sent him to bless you. To turn you from your iniquities. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 says. But Jesus himself gave himself. He gave himself for our sin. That he might deliver us. From this present evil world. He's got the power. Jesus is the life. The Lord can do it. There's a person watching right now. That, 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 that you, you, the devil's been really whooping on you. That you can't never come out of what you in. But I, I got a word from the Lord for you today. Jesus said to tell you. He's greater. Say that. The Lord Jesus is greater. Say it again. The Lord Jesus is greater. Say it again. And he's greater. And when you keep speaking that and believing that in your heart, you'll, you'll see that the Lord is greater. So, so he's got to have the power to deliver us. If God sent Jesus to bless us, to turn us from our iniquities, he's got the power. Now, you read over here, Go back to Acts 26 to, to, to open their eyes. And you know most, most believers you meet, eyes ain't been open to this. And well, I still struggle with this. I still, well, you know, I hear preachers preach that, you know, I and and, and here's the question that comes to my mind. Every time, why did why they don't go ask Jesus to change it? Why they don't go ask Jesus to give them wisdom? How to not be like that again? Where's Jesus at? See, so you got, this is the will of God. You got to see the son and then believe on him to tap into what he is so that life can come and work in your life and set you free, prosper you, deliver you, give you wisdom, how to order your steps. I, I, want, I want to read this in, in, in a down, and then I'm going to read it in a different translation. To open their eyes. To turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan under God. That they might receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified. Jesus said by faith that's in me. So you, you, you see here. This is the process. To open your eyes, to hear the gospel, to open your eyes, how much the Lord loved you and what he did for you, and, and, and your turning to receive. You ever notice forgiveness didn't come at first, but the, the forgiveness came after you turned, even though the Lord's done provided forgiveness. You still don't receive it till you turn. How you going to receive forgiveness smoking a cigarette? See? How you going to receive forgiveness and, and, and you're being hateful to people? You, you have to turn to Jesus and his lordship. And then, then listen, the apostle Paul was, was talking to King Agrippa and said, I was not disobedient to the, unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and Jerusalem throughout all the coasts of Judea and, through, and to the Gentiles that they should repent Turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Now, the verse 20, 
makes that a little more clearer. It says, my message was that they should change their hearts and lives and turn to God. That they may dip, they should demonstrate this change in their behavior. See, see when 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 you turn, there should be a, a difference uh, uh, in your behavior. It's no way you done turn to Jesus, turn to God, and and receive forgiveness through the blood of Jesus, and you still the same. That don't mean. You, you, you won't uh, come up with some struggles of the enemy attacking you, <clears throat> things you done held on to. Um, I didn't hold on to much. I surrendered all. But, but he still had to work with me. He still had to teach me. And he still is today. And um, let me show you, uh, the, I like to amplify too uh, in verse 20. It says, but that they should repent and turn to God and do works and live lives consistent with and worthy of their repentance. Do you see that? And let me give you another one. Uh, the NIV. Uh, I like that one too. It says that, and then, then uh, they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. See? And so, uh, for years I've been helping people get off drugs, alcohol, lust, pornography. Uh, I, I'm just telling y'all, this stuff is in the church. It's in churches. And and uh, I, I have to get people out. But if I be honest with you, some, some men, it, it takes two or three or four times. Some kind of way they get drawn back in it. But 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 I'm gonna tell you, each time they do, it gets worse. Each time it gets worse. And and I pray you you in a church with the, the pastor can can help you come out of that because you're not gonna be blessed living in that. And so so God wants your eyes to open up. He wants your eyes to see. What Jesus Christ did for you on that cross. What did he do, Pastor? He took your sins away. Now I'm going to close today in 1 John chapter 5. I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 5. <clears throat> and we know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in Jesus is no sin. Whosoever uh, abideth in him sinneth not. Is it you? Do you abide in him every day? And, and whoever sinneth have not seen him, neither know him. Now that's a little blind right there, but let me get you, let me get a new living translation. Makes it real clearer. In uh first John chapter three, verse five. Here it is. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins. There's no sin in him. Ain't that wonderful? We have an example. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. What's the sin, Pastor Scales? The sin is you not looking to Jesus and seeing him and how perfect he lived. So you will trust him to show you how not to. That's what's worth. That's worth fifty billion dollars. So anyone who continues to live in Jesus' life, Jesus' strength, Jesus' wisdom, Jesus' grace, Jesus' ability, Jesus' love, Jesus' forgiveness, will not sin. What you are never seeing in. Is telling Jesus he can't fix what you're going through. He can't conquer. He's already had. He can't bring you through it. You will never tell him that. That's sin. Anyone who keeps on sinning, get this, 
does not know him. The King James said they don't know him and never seen him. But the New Living says you do not know him or understand who he is. Who is he, Pastor Cass? He's the one who took your sins away. So you don't understand. You got to see that. That Jesus conquered sin, darkness, addictions, habits, worry, stress, anxiety, poverty, lack. He defeated all the works of the devil. Well, my time's up there. I won't pick this back up tomorrow because I got some more I want y'all to get. I want to make this four city series. Everyone that seeth the Son and believeth. Everyone that seeth him. See the Lord Jesus. And believe it. It's a four CD series for a love gift of $20 or more. Make your checks and money orders to Jesus is Answer Ministries. Post Office Box 292 112 Nashville, Tennessee 37229. And if you order this four CD series, I'll send you a free copy of my book, The Believer's Guide to Christ. <clears throat> and we'll get these right out to you. Also, you can go online to robertscaleministry.org and you can order there and use your credit card and we'll get these right out to you. They will be a tremendous blessing to your life. So order them now. <laughs> and also you can go look at, at, at all the, the materials that we have. That'll be a blessing. If you know anybody locked up in prison, send, send them some materials. We, we've been getting thousands, sending thousands and thousands of books Especially knowing God the right way, gracing, explain, um, and they're, they're really making an impact on anybody's life who gets a chance to read them. So y'all order them today. Also, I want to invite you to Jesus as a church, a church that's alive. It's worth the drive. Uh, our services are streamed live every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10 o'clock regular service, and then 7 o'clock p.m., on Thursdays. And so go online, check us out. If you're not doing anything, I tell you, your life will never, ever be the same. And we in Watertown, Tennessee, and I tell you, you can go on our webpage and find out where that is. Well, I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for your financial support. Thank you for praying for our ministry. I believe, I know the Lord told me to take this around the world. And so I need your help and uh, your support and I thank you so much for being a blessing to the ministry to help me and uh, I tell you God is going to bring a greater revelation of his love to the body of Christ well my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God from Jesus Answer Ministries I'm Pastor Robert Scales remember that as Christ loved you on the cross go live that love toward everybody and have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.